Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea episode and we're going to be talking about e-commerce strategy for manufacturing and distribution. And I brought in the man, the myth, the legend, Kurt Anderson. He caught actually on his LinkedIn profile, it says e-commerce evangelist for manufacturers. I'm excited to talk with you today, Kurt. How you doing? Hey, good morning, Chris, man. What an honor and privilege. Man, I just, I was, I've been up since like three o'clock this morning. I've been so fired up to get together with you. So thank you. Long time coming, and I appreciate this opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. So, looking so forward to working with you today and and learning from you. And let's just let's just go to uh, break it down for us. You're in you're in a high school or a middle school. I guess I have a seventh a seventh grader at my house. So let's say we're, we're in her classroom and we're trying to define for her, all the students in there what e commerce is. How are you going to break that down for them, dude? That's a great question. So you know what, hitting middle, you know what. I actually, I, I, your your daughter would probably explain e-commerce better to us than we do. I have a harder time explaining it to the baby boomers and Gen X and the digital immigrants. You know what I mean? So, right. so the thing is, if we were in the, your your daughter's classroom, they'd probably be mocking me, be like, "Hey, Mr. Anderson, man, we just we bought five things before you even walked in the room, right?" So, but but you know, point will take. You know, let's say it's a, a bunch of uh, baby boomers are in the room and we're trying to explain e-commerce. But e-commerce is, um, you know, it's it's challenging, and I know you know, you guys do a great job with distribution on your side. Dealing with manufacturers, it's a little bit different because they struggle. When we think e-commerce, you know, electronic commerce, you jump on your mobile phone, and next thing, UPS drivers at your door the next day with an Amazon box, right? right? And so, in the manufacturing, you know, you and I work heavy duty in the B two B space. It's a little bit different because a lot of manufacturers, like they make different widgets or different parts. And they're thinking, well, we're not traditional direct to consumer e commerce. You know, we're B2B. Mm-hmm. You don't get it. We don't understand. So, what we're trying to do is like we're trying to help those manufacturers, uh, you know, understand that e commerce is for everybody. You know, it's not just for the direct to consumer and things that your spouse or somebody else is buying for the house. But anyway, talking to those middle schoolers, I think we would have a great conversation. Um, I, you know, a lot of entre- I bet your daughter has a bunch of entrepreneurs in her classroom and they would give us a flood of ideas on how to make money with online. What do you think? I think they they definitely would. They're all, and, and you're 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 all over it cuz the whole world has shifted to that e-commerce strategy. I mean, Amazon, everybody wants that Amazon type experience from distributors to manufacturers and I guess we're going to get there. And I'm curious for you, you know, you have that B2B tail. What's the goal, you know, how are you trying to serve others and help them in that e-commerce strategy to get better? Yeah, thank you. Um you know, great question. So the name of the company, B2B Tail, it's a little play on words. Instead of retail or B2B, we just kind of threw it together. So it's B2B Tail. That's our my little my little tagline there. So again, you know, it's just trying to help these uh, B2B distributors, uh, trying to help uh, manufacturers, uh, trying to create a digital presence, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's it's very daunting, challenging where, you know, traditionally a lot of manufacturers like, oh, this internet thing's a fad. Uh, you know, I, my nephew did a website for me in 2005. We're just going to leave it. But I think, you know, with everything that's uh, trans- transformed in the past couple of years, you know, we're constantly hearing like this digital transformation, if you will. Uh, yeah. Now, you know, e-commerce is no longer a nice to have. E-commerce is a must to have. And so that's kind of our mission at B2B Tales. We do a lot of like webinars, workshops, training, uh, educating uh, folks, entrepreneurs, manufacturers on how to figure out this whole e-commerce uh, jungle, if you will. How's that one? Yeah, I mean, because I mean, the, the whole technology enabling it, you, you have to be playing this game. If you're not playing this game, if you're not in it, it, at this point, it's almost too late to get in. I mean, you really, there's a lot of catch up work to do. There's a lot of catch up work. And I know, you know, uh, you know, again, my respect and admiration for what you guys do is goes deep. And like, even like this podcast here, you know, in a way is e commerce. You know, like you're getting out there, you're, you're, you know, you're doing, you know, I'm so blessed to be here with you today. You're letting me, you know, kind of express what we do. In the same regard, like you're sharing your expertise week in, week out. You know, we have a bunch of mutual friends that have been guests on your show. Joe Sullivan, Jeff Long, and, you know, Ashley, we could go down to Walters. We could go down oh, the yeah. list. You know, you do an amazing job. And in a way, like, you know, this is, e- this is you know, e-commerce in a way. You're not really trying to sell anything, but you're trying to help your ideal buyers out there, educate them on bringing different subject matter experts. So, like, even in a way, what you're doing on a weekly basis, Chris, is, you know, could be argued is is you know, you're delivering an e-commerce educational experience, if you will, right? 
Amen, man. Hopefully the executives are eco or listening to that part, Kurt. Thank you. I'll, I'll slide you a 20 later. <laughs> you want me to say it again? I'll say it slower. So, Chris, you know what a great job that you do. You're the greatest guy in the planet. So, just. <laughs> All good. All good, bro. Thank you so much, Kurt, man. That's great. I am curious because you, you, you deal with so many different manufacturers and businesses. What are you hearing out there these days uh, so far as the top priorities? What yeah. is coming back? Yeah, great. You know, uh, uh, ter- uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm not taking a credit at all for this term. New term that's come on my radar that's really resonating with folks like in your space, distributors and manufacturers, digital self-serve. Digital okay. self-serve. And so the thing is, like a lot of times and again, like I so I, I do these webinars and workshops and, you know, the, the headline will be e-commerce. And uh, once again, kind of being a little redundant here, but you know, that manufacturer is like, Hey, wait a minute. I bend metal. I cut steel. I make things for other people. I make parts that go into an airplane. I make parts that go into a car. Why would I get into e-commerce? But the thing is, there's a study that just came out recently. Uh, I know like our, our mutual friends, Jeff Long and, the, and Joe Sullivan, they talk about this. Uh, Gartner came out with a, a study in June of this year, 83% of B2B buyers prefer an e-commerce or a digital experience as opposed to picking up the phone. I mean, just like, let that sink in for a second, 83%. And the number one complaint of B2B buyers, I can't get enough information on your website. So what happens? I'm now going to go to your competitor. I'm going to go somewhere else. So like, again, having that footprint, establishing and building that trust. And, and, you know, I'm starting to throw it out again, you know, like what you're doing right here with your podcast is like, getting yourself out there, building that trust, but creating that digital self-service experience. I know we were talking about e-commerce at your company before we went online, you know, and like when you take that step, you're demonstrating that that commitment to your customer. Hey, customer, I know you're busy. I know you're slammed today. You've got like 80 things to buy. You've got to get to a soccer game after work today. And you know what? I know you're busy. Come on our site. We're going to remove the friction. We're going to make it super easy. You don't need to pick up the phone. You don't need to call us. Bam, 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 check out. We've got your back. Move on to the other 30 things you need to do today. Get that soccer game tonight and we've got you. You know, so like you're, you, you know, when you go into e commerce and that digital self serve experience, you're just demonstrating to your customer, like, hey, we got you. We know how stressed you are. Let's do this together. Right. Now, that 83%, that's a, that's a big number. Obviously, it, it, there's, a, there's a lot of data behind that. Now, maybe speak to the salespeople who are working for distribution or trying to get out and be in front of the customers. And they just heard that. Wait a minute. Eighty three percent of them. They don't want to see me. Maybe give yeah. them a little pep talk. What do they need to be thinking of? How, how can they serve and, and still provide value? Yeah. Well, hey, a dear friend of ours, Greg Mishu, does an amazing job. He preaches what's called the digital twin. And I know a lot of times we think the digital twin, you know, uh, you know, more in the engineering or maybe automation side. But he does an amazing job t- preaching the digital twin. I'm taking that leg, you know, like take the sales rep that's been going at it for 10, 20, 30 years. They just have Uh wealth of information, know the industry inside and out. What we want to do is like retract that information out of that sales rock star, that sales hall of famer and get that on your website. Get that into Uh a video, get that into a podcast, get that into, you know, a, a white paper, a blog series, whatever, you know, the how to, how to use our product, why to use our product. Uh, safety, sustainability, get that information on the website because again, you're allowing that customer to build that trust without you being on the phone. And what you're doing, instead of the salesperson a- answering that same question over and over and over, now that data, that information, that research is now on the website. You're able to establish that trust, that ideal customer staying on your website. They're not going to your competitor. Then by the time that they get on the phone, you know, when Chris, when, you know, because of this podcast, when somebody picks up and talks to you, like, you know, I've, I've caught a bunch of your podcast episodes and I know, you know, you and I are new recent friends and right. brothers here, right? But I've like, I got to know you because like you've interviewed Jeff Long, you've interviewed Joe Sullivan, you've interviewed Ashley, you've interviewed a bunch of people that I know, like, and trust. And so now that establishes an immediate relationship I have with you. That's it. I mean, and then the relationship, you know, I think at the core of business relationship is still very important. I'm curious. The last couple of years, COVID changed the game big time for distribution. Did it ramp when, with that? Did it ramp up the importance of e-commerce? I mean, is that have you seen that? You know, work from home, everything else that impacted industry over the last couple of years was that a big factor? Huge, 
just absolutely huge. I mean, like anybody, like, I, you know, I hate some people say like, hey, somebody in e-commerce actually started this little COVID thing because like when you, you know, whenever like, you know, tragedy creates opportunity, right? So, right. man, I, I, because like, again, the folks, the, you know, fo- uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a Gen Xer, so I'm kind of throwing us, you know, I'm a digital immigrant, if you will, those of us born before 1980. So I'm kind of throwing us Gen Xers and baby boomers under, under the bus, but say pre-COVID, you're like, you know what? We don't need this e-commerce thing. We don't need LinkedIn. We don't need social media, so on and so forth. You know, then all of a sudden when trade shows were gone, sales reps mm-hmm. come down the road. Now all of a sudden they're like, hey, wait a minute. Again, not a nice to have. This is a must to have. You know, like you and I are creating a great friendship here. How, how did that happen? LinkedIn. If it weren't for LinkedIn, right. you and I would have never crossed paths. Is right. LinkedIn a nice to have? It's how I make a living. It's how you make a living. LinkedIn is absolutely like I wouldn't know how to do business without LinkedIn. That is e-commerce, right? Yes, yeah. right. I, I, I want to also pull a little bit. First of all, thank you on that LinkedIn comment because I think too many businesses out there are not really leaning into that. Luckily mm-hmm. at Eco, we are we're we're full on board with post engagement and things like that. Well, well Kurt, speaking to the, the the LinkedIn area and the importance of of creating content. And getting your your subject matter expertise out of your your subject matter experts and on online so that you can serve digitally. I have kind of a rule: if I had if I get a question asked three times, I'm going to make that into some content. Now it's going to either be a blog, a short video. I'm going to try to do a podcast with someone like you. Yeah. What what what's your advice? Okay, because we do have these experts at Eco. We have sales yeah. people who have been here 30 years and they have tons of insight. What do we need to be doing to try to get that out? Like you said, extract it and put it out there so that we can serve a broader audience. Uh, Chris, phenomenal question, dude. And again, I love what you guys are doing. Echo with everything as far as product, e-commerce, podcasting, what have you. So a hundred years ago, or certainly feels like I had an e-commerce business, okay, back in the 2000s. And like mm-hmm. you know, social media was kind of brand new at the time. And we had a running joke. And the joke was, how could we get the phone not to ring? How could we get the email not to ding? And what that meant was every time the phone rang, I literally, I'd run up the customer service and I'd be like, what did they ask? Why did they ask it? And, you know, I wasn't that aggressive, but like how, where and how can we get that put on the website to answer that question? An email would come in. What did they ask? Okay, well, hey, size, color, safety, sustainability, whatever the question was, we're like, so every time the phone rang, every time the email would ding, we would be like, hey, let's get that information on the website. So maybe it's content, more product information, uh, maybe a spec sheet, maybe it's a video, a how-to video. So my tagline, so I do a bunch of training, webinar, webinars, as I've pointed out, and what our preach is, how can you help your ideal buyer? Make a buying decision on a Friday night at midnight without having to wait for you to open up your doors on Monday morning. So the mm-hmm. thing is, when you can create that 24-hour digital self-serve experience, you know, again, like in retracting that information from that subject matter expert, like, you know, the guys on your team, as you're describing. Right. And, and pull on to this a little bit further. There's a great book out there. I think I've recommended it before on the show, but they ask you answer. I mean, it really did. You know, if you if you get that right, if you just apply that simple strategy, you know, and and I, I really encourage people to lean more into the video. But yeah. hey, blog written written form content still has its place. But again, just service that I love how you say. So what do you say? Friday night at midnight, they can make that decision. Yeah. Where I don't have to wait for you to open up on Monday. Exactly right. And, 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 and so the funny thing is, so I, you know what, as a matter of fact, here right here live, Chris, like I need to have you. I do a LinkedIn live twice a week. I need to have you on as a guest. And my partner is Damon Pastuka. Damon is phenomenal, incredible. He's a, gosh, what a great uh, man he is. And he, he'd be a great guest for you here. But he just, on our program last week, we were interviewing, uh, I think it was Paul Van Meter from Pro Shop. And yeah. he just said, guys, we need, the uh, uh, they ask, you answer, right? Is that the title of the book you just mentioned? Right. He, right. he just brought that up just the other day. And so I agree, they ask. You answer, and I'll tell you. So let's let's go there for a second. So again, I work with a lot of digital immigrants, okay, Gen X, baby boomers, and like you know, digital resistant. And so here's a great. This is a great hack for anybody out there. What we do is we take that person and we're gonna we're gonna interview them. So we've got them on a Zoom and we're gonna hit the we're hitting the record button. And man, these guys, women, men, you know, men, women, whoever it is, they can talk about their product in their sleep right? They've been selling this widget. Mm-hmm. Like we have somebody that sells 
covert antennas. We have somebody that does like foraging, you know, all these different manufacturing operations. They can go down and dirty, but they're not going to sit there and type out a blog post. It's just never going to happen, right? You'd see right. me with hair before you're going to see this person type out a blog post. But by, re- by by getting that recording from the person, what we do then is we use Otter. What is Otter? Otter is a free transcription tool, okay? Absolutely love it. I just blogged about it two weeks ago. We use Otter, we get the transcription. So now we're pulling out all that subject matter expertise from the person that's been doing it for the past 30 years. We use Otter and now it's a copy and a paste. So now we have a video of the subject matter expert. We can get that on the website. We can post it on YouTube. We can post it on Vimeo. We can post it on social, LinkedIn, wherever. But then we're getting the written copy because now we're going after SEO rankings, keyword rankings. And so now we have the written text, but you know what? This person dedicated 30 minutes of their life to talk about what they would talk about and and gladly, right? They would talk about it in their sleep. We get the transcription, copy and paste it, videos, social, blog posts, SEO rankings. Man, we're like, we're we're just, you're really maximizing that one little juicy piece of content. Absolutely. And it doesn't take a whole lot because I think a lot of times we can get just, just, just overwhelmed with, hey, we got to do all these videos, all these blogs, all this stuff. Like, look, just chill, chill. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. One step at a time. You know, but from a technology enabled standpoint, get the basic core items in place to serve. And then, but, but then from a marketing standpoint, you got to start leaning in and having these types of conversations and creating this type of content because that's what's going to pull people to you so that you can serve them even more. Absolutely. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna can we reverse roles for one for half a second? I would love to Absolutely. hear that. Maybe your I don't know if your crowd or your audience knows, and maybe it's been a while since they've heard it. How and why, what inspired you guys to start your podcast? Like, did you guys have an aha moment or was it a team? Like, hey, what should we do? Like talk, just share a little bit, like what inspired you guys to go this route? Because a lot of B2B distributors, this is not their jam. Like, hey, we're not gonna go here, but you guys did it. You've been doing it for right. a long time. You have hundreds of awesome episodes. Sure. Like, yeah. how did you, how'd you get, how'd you tip that, tip your toe in that water? Yeah. I mean, for me, it, it was a crazy pitch from yours truly to our executives. Uh, right. Cause I mean, I was basically riding, riding around listening to a lot of podcasts and I was following Gary V pretty closely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think about after the 10th time of hearing Gary V saying, if you don't start a podcast to support <laughs> your business, you're an idiot. And, you're an idiot. I, and I really cleaned that up for those that listen to Gary V. Right. Yeah, right. right. Good uh, and I was like, it just it just makes sense. I went to our chief operating officer. I, said, I think this is where we need to start leaning yeah. in to to be a, an innovative leader in distribution right. because no one else is doing it. And to your point, you know, we're almost three years into this now, several hundred episodes, and we have so much content. And we're now we're going back through and pulling out a lot of that gold yeah. from those conversations. Yeah. And we're making that into more content to serve in, in different areas. And we're we're leaning into reels and trying to make little short, you know, more short form type videos as well. But it's just, it, it all snowballed. And it was so funny because some of the technologies that we want to get into now, our CEO came up and, and, and we're, we're, we're getting into this technology around this, this software platform through the podcast and, and the, the, the ability, the network that I've been able to create, just serving others and trying to help eco get better. I was able to connect with the chief technology officer for the company that we're actually you know, going to be working with and we're recording together. So it's just like, it's a door opener, but it's a great way to serve and you just get a, a positive message out. And, and, and it's not, that's why we try to focus on this show. It's not people, it's not pro- sales, it's people and ideas over products. And if we can just keep that focus and ch- keep trying to get the good information out there for those in, in industrial manufacturing, they're going to keep coming back. Yeah, dude, that I mean, you know what? And I think a big word that's like just kind of like jumping off the screen to me is you keep saying serve. I've described, you know, digital self-serve. You're talking about, hey, this podcast is our opportunity. It's our vehicle to serve. You know, so I mean, so anybody out there listening, you're like, man, you know, I feel behind. You're not behind. You are not behind whatsoever. Like this whole digital world, we're just getting the party's just starting. So you're not behind on e-commerce. You're not behind if you're like, well, hey, uh, if, you know, if Chris can do a podcast, why can't you do a podcast, right? I do a LinkedIn Live. If I can do one, you could do one. You know, so like you're absolutely not behind. But I love what you're saying, Chris, is that word. If you focus on serving, things are going to fall into place. It definitely does. That's what it's all about. I mean, too, too often we, we think about ourselves. But look, we got to serve others. If we serve others and do the right things, put the right messages out there, that's it, it will make an impact. So I'm curious. But, you know, go back, Kurt. If you could talk to yourself five, ten years ago, 
Mm. Any advice around this e-commerce? What, what would you? What advice would you give yourself back then? Oh gosh, I would have gone all in. So I've been, you know, I've been, I've been kind of singing this phrase, you know, that e-commerce evangelist, as you mentioned before. You know, I've been doing mm-hmm. it, uh, you know, for the past ten years in different capacities. And so I guess you know, if any of us kind of saw this little COVID thing coming, you know, that's just that really just escalated the whole to be B two B e-commerce. So I don't know, maybe you know, I hate to, you know, we're big guys in faith, so I hate to like look in the rearview mirror. I always like to look out, out the windshield, but you know, I'm sure there's a ton of things I could have done different, but. God has a path for us. And I'm just, I'm just a servant following that path. How's that? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, one, one thing I am curious about regarding e-commerce, mm-hmm. you know, being in a distribution world, we know what metrics are important to us, but what metrics are important to evaluate if your e-commerce strategy is actually working? Yeah, great point. So like, you know, uh, you know, as a distributor, odds are, you know, you're selling maybe other OEM products or you're, you know, you're buying a widget, selling a widget right? So right. there's not necessarily, you know, I, I don't, you know, if we want to call it a commodity, but there's not a particular value add per se. But, you know, if you're an OEM or you're a distributor, you're selling products, you know, I, you know, I'm going to go old school County 101 profitability, right? Let's look at what, you know, what are the profits? Now, I know there's other metrics we can look at, you know, get out your Google Analytics. What are your traffic? What's conversions? That type of thing. But I think, you know, when you're the CEO seat or, you know, let's take, uh, you know, most of the folks I deal with are small entrepreneurs, you know, 20 employees, 30, 50. I mean, these are small, you know, roll up your sleeves, amazing, you know, American made in USA, Americans making great products. Right. Right. So, you know, they're they're, you know, man, they're out there. They're challenged. And you know what's what's uh, what's an admirable like, you know, and our, our buddy Adam on, a, on our call here today, we're talking about like the, the risk it takes to take to transition to a new e-commerce platform or ERP, or it could be a new accounting system or like making that plunge. And the challenge is, you know, I was just reading an article, you know, like, no, I was reading a devotional, Chris, actually. And and the person was talking about like, you know, directions, like, you know, especially us guys, I'm going to talk to the dudes out there, right? Who who out there loves asking for directions, right? Chris, do you like asking for directions? I like, I'll drive around for an hour before I admit I'm lost, right? That's right. That's right. For Siri and GPS and all these other things, because now they, you know, they stroke, they, they help our, our poor, fragile, little delicate, delicate male ego, because now we don't have to ask for directions anymore. And the reason that guys don't like asking for directions is we don't want to made to look like the fool, you know? Hey, can you, you know, stop? Mm -hmm. I'm old enough to remember we'd have to actually have like a big map or stop in a gas station and say, hey, can you tell me where this is? Well, nobody wants to feel like the dummy, right? So the thing is, when you're making a big technology change, nobody, it's like asking for directions. Nobody wants to be the dummy, you know? So you're trying to line yourself with, like you talked about, like, what? look at what this podcast did. You interviewed mm-hmm. the CTO of the e-commerce platform you're going to use. You built that relationship. Now you have a trusted guide to help you get onto the other side of that technology. You know, right? So I think the big thing. It's very intimidating. Um, if you work at a bigger company, do you want to take that chance or that risk and potentially lose your job? What if it? Go, what if the ERP installation goes wrong? What if you pick the wrong platform and everybody's blaming you? So there's, you know, there's a lot of risk there that goes behind making those big decisions. You know, if the, if you will, right? Back, so getting back to your metrics, if you will, you know, for uh, when it comes to distribution and, you know, OEM products, I, you know, I'm a bottom line guy and I know there's other metrics for the custom manufacturer that they don't have that proprietary product. You know, uh, e-commerce is receiving a quote, having submit a, somebody submit you a drawing, somebody requests a conversation, you know, on your website, get your Calendly link on there. Let's get out of the, hey, Chris, are you available next Tuesday at nine? No, I'm busy. How about Thursday at two? No, I'm busy. I'll have my people get to your people. Let's just get our calendar. Like that's e-commerce, right? Like right. let's make it as easy. If, if we like remove the word e-commerce and just let's replace it with KISS, keep it super simple and let's make it as easy as humanly possible to do business with each other, then e-commerce is secondary. It's not first. You, you, you see what I'm saying? You're all over it, man. And I mean, this and simple things, like you said, Calendly. Why does not every salesperson in the country have Calendly right. in their email signature and I mean, on their websites? I mean, you have to make, you just grease the skids, take the friction out. And then all those things take the friction out, man. That's right. so right. good. So good. Right. Right. Well, Kurt, we, we always wrap up with the why on eco, eco ask why. And I'm curious, man, why are you so passionate about e-commerce? 
you know, uh, I, a uh, hundred years ago, I had a, uh, I had a wholesale business and, uh, this was in, dude, I don't know. You're probably in diapers, Chris. I was, this was in the nineties and uh, I'm, I, you know, so I had an, I had a wholesale business and this is a God, this is a true story. Gospel's true. Okay. My accountant told me I was the biggest disaster that she had ever met. How's that for her? How that's a mic drop <laughs> moment right there, right? I was the biggest disaster she ever met. I had this wholesale business, man. I tried everything. I you name it. I was just young, relentless entrepreneur. And when I say relentless, like probably dumb, just trying to figure things out. So in 1995, there was this like this whole e-commerce thing was coming out. Like it, like America Online was sending out little DVDs. People probably don't even know what these are anymore. Remember this. They were sending out DVDs from the Super Bowl commercial, trying to get people on the internet. We had like dial-up modem. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm 20, I'm in my 20s. I, I'm going to try this. And so I sat there and also like, we'd get an order. We'd get an order. We'd get an order. And I'm like, I can, I can, I can do what I just preached. I can sell something on a Friday night at midnight without having to wait for me to open up the door on Monday. Are you kidding? And here's a great thing about e-commerce. Anybody out there that's like, you know, I'm a little risen to e-commerce, get this one, especially you, Mr. or Mrs. Manufacturer. You get paid before you ship the product. Mm -hmm. If you're a manufacturer and somebody pulls out the credit card and pays you, you get, I have a, I have a manufacturer right now. I have multiple manufacturers, but one in particular, they get paid before they even make the product. How's that for cash flow, right? How's that for cash flow? So why I'm so passionate about it, it completely changed my business. I was no longer my accountant's worst client. Uh, she actually helped me sell. I sold the business years later. We were on an inter internet retailer, top 1,000 companies, three years in a row. So you know, we finally turned the ship around. It took me a long, long, long time, but we finally turned it around. And so when I sold the company, I felt my purpose, my passion, my drive was to help other digital immigrants or other folks in this space to help them navigate of what I, you know, don't go through all the challenges and make all the thousands of mistakes I made. Let me help you. And so that's my passion and my why. I absolutely love it. So Kurt, where should, should people go to connect with you, to learn more, to engage and, and to get support? Yeah, uh, man, I'm, you and I are super active on LinkedIn. I would love to connect with anybody on LinkedIn. And my website is B2Btail. So it's letter B, number two, letter B, tail, like little retail. So B2Btail, we have a free website audit that we audit, uh, offer for manufacturers. Again, digital self-serve. You can just go right on the website. You put in your, your domain name and you know, no strings attached. I'm not going to call you, email you, but you get it, you receive a, a free audit and it just kind of helps you tell you where you stand uh, on your website. So yeah, I'd love to connect with any of your listeners and uh, that would be awesome. Absolutely. And listeners out there, Go to the show notes. We'll make sure we have links for everything Kurt just mentioned, as well as his book. I'm, hold, I'm holding it up right up, up here for those that are watching on YouTube. Got to get this one. Stop being the best kept secret manufacturing e-commerce strategies. This is a wonderful book. I enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. And thank so that'll be in the link, as, uh, the link as well. So you guys can get you a copy there. So, Kurt, man, thank you so much for everything you shared today on Eco Ask Why. Hey, Chris, you're a blessing, my friend. Thank you for everything that you're doing. And God bless you, dude. You too, brother. All right, that was a wonderful conversation with Kurt. Learned so much about e-commerce, the strategies there, how to implement, things you need to be aware of. I tell you what, that digital self-serve, the way he talked about that, the, the importance of that. If we're not, if you're not doing it now, you need to jump into the game. And I tell you what, learning from someone like Kurt and, the, and what he's doing at B2B Tail, there's so much wisdom there. So again, go check out the show notes. It's a great way to connect with him, learn more. And again, if you're enjoying the Eco Ask Why, I would encourage you to share this with others. Give us a five-star rating, write a review. That makes all the difference in the world. Keep coming back. You know, we're going to come in week in, week out, trying to give you the people and ideas over products that are going to really make an impact in your business. So just remember, keep asking why. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.